artificial hormone treatment. Ten-year-old Charlie Hooper can't speak or walk and is virtually blind. Her parents have also had doctors remove her womb. Opponents argue that this type of treatment is a violation of her human rights, but her parents disagree. The growth attenuation treatment was something that we could do to really, I believe, extend her life. I, I totally believe that it will extend her life. Um, and make her more part of the world, not less. None of the other operations did that. Let's talk now to child psychologist Dr Amanda Gummer. Uh, what, are, what are the merits are otherwise of these growth attenuation treatments? Um, I'm not a, a medical doctor, so I can only really speak about the kind of the emotional and, and developmental side of this. But um, I mean, the, your heart must go out to, to the parents who have to make such difficult decisions. Nobody wants to put their children through unnecessary operations or, or do anything that's going to harm their children. And I think the media frenzy around this is, is demonising the parents who are, there's, there's nothing to, um, to suggest that they're anything other but than loving parents who've got some really difficult choices to make. I mean, the, the criticism that they faced uh, is, is from organisations that say that they're vi violating her human rights, that, that, that these kind of treatments have been carried out largely for their convenience rather than hers. Um, I've heard, I've seen the, the reports that say that, but um, I actually can, can listen to the parents' point of view as well, where they are able to pick her up and cuddle her and take her places that she wouldn't be able to go to just purely from logistics if she's a fully grown adult. And... Um, I do, again, I don't know the medical details of the case. I'm not sure that they're expecting her to, to live in, for, uh, far into adulthood. So um, for me, I can completely understand the parent's desire to give her the best um, quality of life that they, that they can. And I think it must be very hard um, to be the parent of a, of a severely disabled child and have the rest of the world with their very healthy, you know, fully um, involved children in the world making decisions or making judgments about them. I think parents need to stop doing that. They, we need to support each other, not um, not demonise each other. But um, obviously the law does need to protect the vulnerable children who can't speak for themselves. Indeed, and, and it, it also touches on the issue of sterilisation, doesn't it? There's been a lot of debate about the sterilisation of people with disabilities. I mean, they point out that, that this uh, poor girl, for her to undergo menstruation and things like that, will be traumatic for her. Um, do you think that there are merits when, when it is a case like this of carrying out these kind of operations? I have to say I think all of these these sort of extreme cases should be judged on their merits and I don't think that um, it's it's my place or, or anybody else's place to sort of take a few of the facts and make some fairly harsh judgments on whether what the parents are doing is right or not. Um, I think it's it's incredibly um, challenging and difficult and heart wrenching to see a child suffer in any way, and I think that we should be supporting um, the legislative pro process and the parents in making sure that all children get the best start in life and are allowed to thrive and, and make the best of their own lives, whatever their circumstances. Okay, Dr. Amanda Gummer, good to talk to you. Thanks very much.